Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where, as always, we learn through the misfortunes of others. I am your host, Uncivil Law, a licensed attorney in Virginia and Texas, and we are here to talk about some new guidance that has just come down from the Copyright Office in the last two weeks regarding copyright and AI-produced works. So this is an issue that involves all kinds of AI works. Midjourney, of course, comes to mind. Dolly comes to mind, but also other AI-generated works, whether it's AI video, AI audio, audio duplication, audio cloning, video cloning, deep fake kind of technology, AI-produced technology. And what is the copyright issues as it relates to AI-produced technology? Because, of course, there's not a human being, perhaps, in the, in the chain, depending on what exactly we're talking about, right? So this is a little bit about, okay, when, when a person is using AI technology, they're using it as a tool, then maybe that's one thing, but how involved does the user have to be? And this isn't necessarily the first time the Copyright Office has had to deal with this kind of question in the past, incidentally. They've dealt with this kind of issue before as other technologies have come along the pipe and uh, along the years, along the centuries even there's been sort of similar discussions about the thing. In fact, if you want to go fa far back enough, the idea of copyright in photographs at all initially was questioned because maybe, maybe that's not enough of a user innovation. innovation. When, the, when the camera was first invented, the idea is, well, it's just recording what's being produced by the machine. There's not enough human intervention in there. That was a real argument when the camera was invented, you know, as to how much the user has to be involved. Of course, today, that's not an issue. You know, we now understand that users, when they're using a camera, even though the camera is recording what's there, there's still issues of framing, composition, lighting, and all the rest of it. There's enough human involvement to say there's a copyright interest when a user takes the photograph. And so maybe it's the same issue with the AI technology, but in the same way that we have these debates with the camera, now we have to have these debates with AI technology because, hey, maybe it's a difference in kind. Maybe there's, because the, the, the machine itself is now doing creati creative things, maybe that's different. So the Copyright Office has posted some initial, some new guidance on this issue. This was published in the Federal Register about two weeks ago, and we're going to go over this and just read what their current thoughts on the issue are as they try to deal with this technology. So this was published in the official Federal Register, which is the compendium of all US governmental actions. So this is as official as it gets, and we'll read what they say. The Copyright Office is the federal agency tasked with administering copyright registration system, as well as advising Congress, other agencies, and the federal judiciary on copyright and related matters. Because the office has overseen copyright registration since its origins in 1870, it's developed substantial experience and regarding the distinction between non-copyrightable and the copyrightable. The office is empowered by the Copyright Act and incidentally the Constitution itself, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8, to establish the application used by applicants seeking registration of copyright works. While the Act identifies certain minimum requirements, the Register, the Register of Copyrights, may determine that additional information is necessary for the office to evaluate the existence, ownership, or duration of copyright. Because the office receives roughly half a million applications for registration each year, it sees new trends in registration activity that may require modification or expanding of information required to be disclosed. One such recent development is the use of sophisticated artificial intelligence technology capable of producing expressive materials. These technologies train on vast quantities of pre-existing human author works and use inferences from that training to generate new content. Some systems operate in response to a user textual instruction, often called a prompt. The resulting output may be textual, visual, or audio, and is determined by the AI based on design and material it's been trained on. These technologies, often described as generative AI, raise questions about whether the material they produce is protected by copyright, whether works consisting of both human-authored and AI-generated material may be registered, and what information should be provided by the office seeking to register them. 
These, of course, are no longer hypothetical, as the office has already received and examined applications for registration that claim copyright in AI-generated material. For example, in 2018, the office received an application for a visual work the applicant described as autonomously created by a computer algorithm running on a machine. The application was denied because based on applicant's representation in the application, the examiner found no work of human authorship. After a series of administrative appeals, the office's review board issued a final determination affirming a work could not be registered because it was made without any creative con contribution by a human actor. So in that particular work, the nature of the claim was that the machine did it completely autonomously. That was the nature of the claim. It said no human intervention of any kind. That was what the person writing the application said. The office said, said no, can't do that. There has to be a human being somewhere in this chain at some level. So whatever the answer is, no human being involved is the wrong answer. So, okay, can't do that. More recently, the office has reviewed registration for work containing human authored elements combined with AI generated images. In February 2023, the office concluded a graphic novel, comic book, comprised of human authored text combined with, a, with images created by the AI service Midjourney constituted copyrightable work, but the images themselves could not be protected by copyright. All right. So this distinction is perfectly reasonable right in law already you can have non-copyrightable elements but the collection of the elements is copyrightable so the most famous example of this would just be for for pure facts such as a telephone book would be the most obvious example historically a telephone book is just a compilation of pure facts there's nothing creative about it at least nothing creative in sort of the, the factual details. But the office has said, and the Supreme Court said in Feist as well, there is enough human creativity in the compilation of the facts because the, because the person who creates the phone book still has to decide how to organize it. You know, what? how do you organize it? You could just do it straight alphabetically. You could subcategorize it by business type. The, the phone book has classically had white pages, blue pages, pink pages for different kinds of entries. And there's some creativity in that. It's minimal creativity, so it's a thin copyright. So it's not copyrighted much, but it's enough for some de minimis copyright where pure copying would be an issue. Also with maps, another classic example, where there's some thin copyright. You can't have copyright in the underlying information, but the exact nature of how it's produced cannot be reproduced exactly. So you can use the facts to create your own work, but there is no copy, but the copyright in the collection is there. So same idea, right? So the, the copyright office in examining this question previously took the position that the AI generated art from mid journey was not user created enough. There might be some user prompting, but not user created enough. That was their position. But even though the images themselves are not copyrightable, the, co the collection of them would be copyrightable because the user still made a selection in which art to use, how to display it, how to put it into the book, and other things along those lines. So that was the idea there. All right. The office has received other applications that have named AI technology as an author or co author of a work or have included statements in author created or note to copyright office sections of application indicating the work was produced by or with the assistance of AI. Other applications have not disclosed the inclusion of AI to generate material, but have mentioned the names of AI technologies in the title of the work or acknowledgement sections of deposit. Based on these developments, the, AI, the office, copyright office again, concludes public guidance is needed on registration of works containing AI generated content. The statement of policy describes how the office applies copyright law, human's authorship requirement to application of such work, to provide guidance to applicants. The office recognizes that AI-generated works implicate other right copyright issues not addressed in the statement. For example, the issue of whether or not Midjourney, for example, itself is committing copyright infringement. So whether or not the work produced by Midjourney can itself be copyrighted, 
there is an issue as to whether or not it's copyright infringement, for example. The office has initiated an agency-wide initiative to delve into these issues. Among other things, the office intends to post a, publish a notice of inquiry later this year, seeking public input on these additional legal and policy topics, including how the law should be applied to use copyright works in AI training and resulting treatment of outputs. So as courts are looking at this as well, so are the administrative agencies. And this, of course, is the agency that deals with this. This is the subject matter experts. So their, their conclusions and analysis is not binding on the courts, particularly because they're not, a, they're not an executive agency. So Chevron doesn't apply, which is kind of an interesting little twist, right? We talk about Chevron all the time in terms of administrative law and how much power administrative agencies get. But Chevron applies to executive agencies. And the Copyright Office is not an executive agency. It's a legislative agency. It is an agency within the Library of Congress, which is congressional. So no Chevron deference. So, hey, there's a little twist. That being the case, however, their guidance is still going to be used by courts who are not subject matter experts, but they won't get the same level, level of deferral that an executive agency is, which is kind of interesting It's sort of how the legal implications go. Okay, anyways, pressing on. The office recognizes that AI generated works. Okay, we read that part. All right. The human authorship requirement. In the Copyright Office's view, it is well established that copyright can only protect material that is the product of human creativity. Most fundamentally, the term author which is used both in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8, and the Copyright Act excludes non-humans. I mean, yeah. The office registration policies and regulations reflect statutory and judicial guidance on the issue. In the leading case on authorship, the Supreme Court used language excluding non-humans in interpreting the power to provide authors the exclusive reuse right to writings. In Burl Giles' lithography versus Sarney, a defendant accused of making unauthorized copy of a photograph argued the expansion of copyright protection to photographs was unconstitutional because a photograph is not the writing nor product of an author, but is instead created by a camera. I told you in the cold intro that the issue of whether or not there's copyright in photography was at one point a controversial issue. It was a controversial issue to the point that it went to the U.S. Supreme Court at one point. The court disagreed, holding there's no doubt the Constitution's copyright clause permitted photographs to be subject to copyright so far as they're representative <coughs> so far as they're representative of original intellectual conceptions of the author. The court defined author as he whom anything owes its origin, originator, maker, one who completes a work of science or literature. It repeatedly refused to use such authors as human, describing authors as a class of persons, and copyright as the exclusive right of man to productions of his own genius or intellect. So because a human being chooses when to press the shutter button at a bare minimum, chooses lighting, composition, framing, focus, aperture, among other things, there is enough human work in there, despite the fact that it is recording in a machine, but the user makes the decision, not the machine. So, you know, yeah. Federal appellate courts have reached similar conclusions when interpreting the text of the Copyright Act, which provides for copyright protection only for a work of authorship. The Ninth Circuit has held a book containing works authored by non-human spiritual be beings can only qualify for copyright protection if there's human selection or arrangement of revelation. So... If your claim is that your holy book is literally produced by God, no copyright. So, as God is not a person. In another case, it held a monkey cannot register a copyright it creates with a camera because the Copyright Act refers to what authors, children, widow, grandchildren, widower, all applying humanity. Yes, we all remember Nerotu, the monkey who did a selfie. No copyright for you. <laughs> 
relying on these cases and others, the office's existing registration guidance has long required that works be the product of human authorship. In the 1973 edition of the office's compendium, the office warned it would not register materials that did not owe their origin to a human agent. The second edition of the compendium, published in 1984, explained the term authorship implies for a work to be copyrightable, it must owe its origin to a human being. And the current edition of the compendium, the work states, to qualify as a work of authorship, a work must be created by a human being, and it will not create work, register works produced by a machine or mere mechanical processes that operate randomly or automatically without any creative input or intervention. So, although, of course, the modern creation of AI-generated arts is perhaps a difference in kind or a difference in degree, depending on your view, this is not the first time the office has been presented by works created by computer or by machine. Even as early as the 1970s, the office was dealing with these issues, with works being created by computer, with or without human assistance to some degree. So these issues have been simmering in the background for a while, but of course the current issue brings these previously delineated issues to a completely new light. There has been an evolutionary step that requires further consideration. But still, things we've dealt with before, and depending, of course, on your point of view, you could go back to the introduction of a camera and introduction of other technologies, depending on how far back you want to go the chain. Not the first time we've had to deal with this issue to some degree. As the agency overseeing copyright, the office has extensive experience in evaluating work submitted for registration that contain human authorship combined with uncopyrightable material, including material generated by or with the assistance of technology. It begins by asking whether the work is basically one of human authorship with the computer or device merely being an assisting instrument or whether the traditional elements of authorship in the work, the literary, artistic, or musical expressions were actually conceived and executed not by man, but by machine. So, is the human being using the tool, or is the tool kind of driving itself? In cases of work containing AI-generated material, the office will consider whether the AI contributions are a result of mechanical reproduction, or instead an author's own original mental conception, to which the author gives a visible form. The answer will depend on circumstances, particularly how the AI tool operates and how it was used to create the final work. This is necessarily case by case, at least for the moment, right? At least for the moment, this is case by case. We're teasing this out. We're teasing this out. This is not necessarily the final word on this issue. In fact, I guarantee you it's not. But it's the office's, it's the copyright office's current guidance on the issue. And this is like, okay, given everything we know, this will have to be case by case until we can develop a more systematic rule set. If a work's traditional elements of authorship were produced by machine, the work lacks human authorship and the office will not register it. For example, when an AI technology receives solely a prompt from a human and produces a complex written, visual, or musical work in response, the traditional elements of authorship are deemed determined and executed by technology, not the user. So the office thinks, and I tend to agree, that merely a prompt is not human creation enough. The, the user is not creating enough stuff for it to, because the machine is the one making all the creative choices in sort of the construction of it. So the prompt is not human user enough. In instead, these prompts function more like instructions to a commissioned author. They identify what the preemptor wishes to have depicted, but the machine determines how the instructions are implemented, which is a reasonable comparison, right? If you went to a commissioned artist and you described what kind of work you wanted created, you, no matter how much detail you gave them, the artist is the one creating. There's no copyright in the instructions alone. Incidentally, the Copyright Act itself says that. There's no copyright in the instructions. There's no copyright in just pure instructions by themselves. So, yeah, 
that makes logical sense. You know, if you went to a hundred different artists and you gave them the same exact instruction, one would imagine you'd get a hundred different works. Depending on the detail of your instructions, they may be pretty similar, but they'd be distinct. They'd be independently created. And each one would be copyrightable unto itself. And even if somehow two artists produced exactly the same work, they'd each, each be independently copyrightable because they each were produced independent of the other. So they don't even, copyright does not require it to be unique, incidentally. If a person creates a work that someone else has created, as long as they didn't have access or use that material, they both get copyright in the exact same thing. It's an independent work of creation. Two people came up with it independently. So that makes logical sense. They, we don't say that the person who gave instructions to the artist is the copyright holder for the painting, or the photographer for that matter, or the composer, or the painter, or the sketch artist, or whatever. It's, right, it's the person who creates. So that distinction makes sense by parallel which is normally how we do this in law, incidentally. We normally look to how we do, what is the comparable? This makes logical sense, great. For example, if a user instructed a text generation technology to write about a poem about copyright law in the style of William Shakespeare, the user can expect the system to generate text that's recognizable as a poem, mentions copyright, and resembles a Shakespearean style. But the technology will decide the rhyming pattern, the word in each line is in the structure of the text. When AI technology determines the expressive elements of output, the general material generating material is not the product of authorship. As a result, material is not protected by copyright and must be disclaimed in a copyright application. The Copyright Office shares my view on this issue. So that's nice. In other cases, however, a work containing AI-generated material will also contain sufficient human authorship to support copyright. For example, a human may select or arrange AI-generated material in a sufficiently creative way. The resulting work as a whole constitutes an original work of authorship. Going back to your idea of the comic book, no copyright in the individual images, but copyright in the overall composition. Or an artist may, artist may modify materially original and generated by AI technology to such a degree the modifications meet the standard for copyright material. So perhaps the user makes changes. How many changes do they have to make? Well, that's where things get interesting, right? But if a user does enough editing, whatever that is, then there might be copyright in that. In these cases, the copyright would only protect the human authored aspect of the work which is independent of and do not affect the copyright status of the AI machine work. So yes, that makes logical sense too. So whatever, whatever amount of human involvement is required to produce a copyrighted work, the copyright only extends to the human involvement, not the underlying thing. In the same way that having a block of marble, if I make a sculpture out of marble, there is copyright in the, revolting, in, the, in, the, in the resulting sculpture. There is no copyright in the original marble. That would be really stupid, right? Oh, it's like no one else can make sculptures out of marble. I've copyrighted in all things, I've copyrighted in all things marble. That's really, really dumb, right? The copyright only extends to insofar as my creativity extended. Other people get to use marble, including by making sculptures, just so long as it's not the same as mine. So, Whatever the answer is here for how much users have to do, like is merely changing one pixel enough? Probably not. Is merely doing a simple minor color grade correction enough? Eh, probably not. But whatever the answer is, whatever the answer is, whatever that is, it doesn't imply copyright in the original. It only implies user in the in copyright in the in the in the result. So compilations of AI created technology like a comic book, sure, whatever the user editing is, okay, but it doesn't imply copyright to the underlying thing. That makes sense. This policy does not mean that technological tools cannot be used as part of the creative process. Authors have long used such tools to create works or recast, transform, or adapt expression. For example, a visual artist who uses Adobe Photoshop to edit an image remains the author of the modified image, 
and a musical artist may use effects such as guitar pedals when creating a sound recording. In each case, what matters is the extent to which the human had creative control over the expression and actually formed traditional elements of authorship. Consistent with the office policies described above, applicants have a duty to disclose the inclusion of AI-generated work, submission for registration, and provide a brief explanation of human authors' contributions. As contemplated by the Copyright Act, such disclosures are information regarded by the Register of Copyright as bearing upon preparation or identification of the work or existence, ownership, or duration of copyright. Individuals who use AI technology in creating work may claim copyright protection for their own contributions to the work. They must use the standard application and identify the authors and provide a brief statement in author creative field describing authorship that was contributed by a human. For example, an applicant who incorporates AI-generated text into a larger textual work should claim the portions of the textual work that's human-authored. An applicant who creatively arranges the human and non-human content within a work should fill out author-creative fill to claim, selection, coordination, and arrangement, describe the human-authored content, created by author and describe the AI content generated by human intelligence. So the, the office wants you to specifically designate which sections are human created and which sections are AI created. And incidentally here, by the way, even if they're all AI created, you still might be able to get a copyright in the, in the overall composition if depending on, if it's a collection of segments. So if you asked a, uh, if you wrote a book of eight, 100 AI created poems, then that might be enough because you selected which poems and put them in some sort of order or something. So that would be enough, but you don't own a copyright in the underlying poems, just the, 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 collective, the collective composition. So the office wants you to designate which is which as they're trying to make these determinations. And also not for at least the reasons that in the future, should a court make a different determination, then we know which is which so that we can adapt accordingly, right? The office is trying to, to some degree, make this guidance a little bit future-proof, right? Or as much as they can. So it's like, okay, we want you to designate what's what so that in the future, if we have to change our guidance because of court decisions or otherwise, well, it'll be relatively easy, all things considered, to, to unwind this because we know enough information up front. So that's part of the idea as well. AI-generated content that's more than de minimis should be excluded from the application. This may be done by limitation of claim in the other field under material excluded. Applicants should provide a brief description of AI-generated content, such as by entering a description of content generated by artificial intelligence. Applicants may also provide additional information in notice to the Copyright Office field of the standard application. So. Again, the underlying AI content itself, the underlying content should not be provided in an application, only its composition, collection, and so forth. Applicants who are unsure of how to fill out the application may simply provide a general statement. The work provides AI material. The office will contact the applicant when the claim is reviewed and determine how to proceed. In some cases, the use of AI tool will not raise questions about human authorship, and the office will explain nothing needs to be disclaimed. So the office, of course, as always, just wants you to be honest. And then, you know, we'll figure it out as we go along. And we're, we're all entering this brave new reality together. And the copyright office is trying to figure this out alongside you guys. So just be really honest with us and we'll do our best. You know, fair enough. Applicants who've already submitted applications for work creating, creating, containing AI materials should check the information provided the office adequately discloses it. If not, they should take steps to correct the information. For applications currently pending, off, the applicant should contact, contact the Copyright Office Public Information Office and report their application amid the fact the work created AI-generated material. Staff will add a note to the record, which the examiner will see. If necessary, the examiner when will then correspond with applicant to obtain additional information about the nature of the work. For applications that have already been processed and resulted in registration, the applicant should correct the public record by submitting a supplementary registration. 
A supplement registration is a special type of registration that may be used to correct an error in copyright registration or amplify information given in registration. In supplemental registration, the applicant should describe the original material the human author contributed in the author creative field, disclaim AI generated material in material excluded, and complete a new material added other field. As long as there's sufficient human authorship, the office will issue a new supplemental registration certificate with a disclaimer. So you can keep the original registration, just modifying what it is. Because of course, at the time, you filed the current guidance and now the office has changed the guidance. So we will do our best and we'll correct things as needed. Applicants who fail to obtain update the public record after obtaining registration may risk losing benefits. If the office becomes aware that information essential to evaluation has been admitted entirely from application or is questionable, it may take steps to cancel registration. Separately, a court may disregard a registration in an infringement action pursuant to law if it concludes the applicant knowingly provide the applicant office with incorrect information and accurate information would result in a refusal. So, you know, kind of as before or sort of as always, if you lie to the office, you know, the courts are going to whack you over the head. And if you don't correct it, when you have a duty to correct it, the courts may whack you over the head. So, you know, just FYI. The policy statement sets out the office's approach to registration of work containing material generated by AI. The office continues to monitor new factual and legal developments and may issue new guidance in the future. You could, you can absolutely bet on that for sure. Published March the 10th by the Registrar of Copyrights and Director of the Copyright Office. So that is all the stuff that's there. So the office's understanding of copyright also agrees with my understanding of copyright. I, I do not think there's copyright in a mid-journey created work or other AI created technologies for the exact same reason the office does. There's simply not enough human creativity in, even if the human provides a prompt. Those are just merely instructions. They may be specific instructions, but instructions nonetheless. It is the machine that's creating. And there's no copyright in the underlying instructions because copyright law says there's not. That, of course, doesn't necessarily itself speak to the copyright infringement issue that Mid Journey and a whole bunch of other people are being sued for right now. Although my personal view is that that's fair use because you are using it to create a transformative work that is transformative. So even though the amount of work being taken is quite substantial, the nature of what's happening is transformational in its nature. And so I think the best analysis is that there's no copyright infringement, at least for the vast majority of AI generated works. Although of course that may not necessarily hold in some specific use case, but as a general proposition. And also this doesn't necessarily speak to the issue of deep fakes or other copy or other claims that can be made. For example, infringements of right of publicity under state law, for example, would not be governed by copyright law. It's governed by something else. Also, to the extent you make a person, you know, the, the, to the extent that the copyright or to the extent the AI is producing a defamatory work, there's issues in defamation law. So this doesn't by any means solve all the problems, even if you conclude, as I do, that the mid journey and other sort of AI created art is not copyrightable. It doesn't speak to issues for false light, right of publicity, defamation, product liability and other illegal issues, which will have to be teased out on its own metrics. So that is sort of the best guidance right now. And as the office itself notes, it is publishing further requests for comments in the federal register uh, as it tries to tease out some of these issues, which are also simultaneously percolating through the courts. But to the extent the Copyright Office gets to it first, I think the courts are likely, although not necessarily bound by, the Copyright Office's determination. So that is all I have for this discussion. I hope you enjoyed this deeper dive legal analysis and I hope you got something of value in it. And I hope that all the AI creating artists out there have a better understanding of what the Copyright Office is thinking and also their current guidance on such issues. So please feel free to tell all the mid-journey creating artists out there and such 
about this kind of stuff because hey this is you know the latest and greatest on this issue and it's what we'll use going forth so yeah let me ask a few questions let me answer a few questions as i wrap this up um so are the trained weights of the ai network copyrightable typically no because the ai is the one itself creating the weights so it would be no because meta facebook has been taking down github reposts where llama weights have been posted uh no to the extent copyright is probably not the right answer it would be a trade secret would be the right issue so uh uh copyright's probably the wrong theory um meta would be able to take down as a violation of their trade secrets uh though because it would be a trade secret so the orange cow says how much does enforceability come into play with this stuff i don't understand the question i mean if you have a legal copyright then it's legally enforceable so the question is what should be legally enforceable the degree to which you can enforce it practically uh is not the, the right issue the issue is what is the law right now on this issue but stuff like that can you submit images of support for your application for example submitting the ai image an image you edited and want to be copyrighted sure i think that would be fine and would go to your disclosure yes it would help the, the more distinct the edited image is relative to the ai the better you're going to be off so where the line is i don't know but the more different the better but yes, you probably should disclose both the underlying image and the human created image as you are applying for such things because, well, then you didn't deceive the office, which is always helpful. If you AI generated face, then paint over the face itself, what's different legally? You painted it, but basically copied the AI. Hmm. Well, I don't know to the degree to which there's no creativity in it. If you could, if you could duplicate it exactly, there's no human creativity in it. If you use it as inspiration, though, that's different. So how? Again, I I think the issue is the is the nature of the difference. So if you had an AI generated image and you use it as inspiration for a human created image, I think you're fine. If you somehow could duplicate it exactly. I don't think there's any copyright in it because there's no creativity in it. You're just a machine. And so the, the, the nature of the copyright would be in the nature of the distinction. How much does the human have to do? I don't know. Neither does the office. The prompt itself isn't enough. You typically create a prompt, select a style, choose which results to enhance, and use the results to create more variations of the form. Yeah, the selection of a style isn't enough. Like, the analogy would be to the real world, right? If I go to a human painter and be like, I want you to paint this in a Renaissance style, or even I want you to paint this like, uh, I don't know, Van Gogh or somebody. You know, it's like, I want you to, um, I want you to duplicate another artist's style. You don't, there's no copyright in style. There's no copyright in style. So to the degree that a human being could create a work that would be believed to be of another artist's style, then that's fine because there's no copyright in style. So there's some artists that, out there that have some very distinct styles. But if another human being can create a a completely new work but in that style to the extent that you would think it's the same yeah you don't have copyright in style so a mere selection of style isn't enough creation of a prompt isn't enough choosing which results to enhance probably isn't enough using it to create more variations isn't enough right because in those situations it's still the machine doing all those things the machine is still the one using your prompts which in this case is you know, more extensive, but not a human creative endeavor, I think is the correct answer. As this apply to custom tattoos, it doesn't at all. Because a, a custom, to the extent that a human being is the one creating a tattoo, there's copyright in a tattoo. I mean, that much is clear. We know that. So if that's your question.
Why couldn't a human made text prompt to AI be a human authorship? Because it's instructions and instructions are excluded from the Copyright Act. That's why. Let's see if there were other. Oh, there was another super chat too uh, from Joe's Mad. Been thinking about this. Thanks for covering it. You're welcome. Always try to try to get stuff. If it becomes impossible to tell what it is in AI, can it be enforced? If you lie to the copyright office, you're going to have a problem. Right? So, if the office can't tell the difference, but you mislead the office, well, that's a problem. You're going to have problems down the pipe. You can, you can, bet, your, you can bet your bottom dollar that one of the questions that will be asked in a deposition is about your use of AI technology or other technologies, because that will obviously be a question. So you don't want to lie to the office. All right. So that is, will bring us to the end of the stream. That's because it brings us to the end of the questions. I hope you enjoyed this stream. As always, please remember to like the video and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me on Uncivil Law.